Today we're going to talk to you about some of our most important inventions, some of our greatest efforts, and in my opinion, some of our finest work. Today we're going to dedicate the day in talking about Kepler. Kepler is our brand new baby. This is a processor we've been working on for coming up on three years. Thousands of engineers have worked on Kepler. And I hope that today we're going to tell you a few things about Kepler that you did not know. Kepler is a GPU that will fundamentally advance computer graphics yet again. It is also the architecture by which we'll take GPU accelerated computing to the next level to further advance the work that we've already started to do together. Kepler is a big, big deal for us. We are so proud of it. It is the best GPU we've ever built. It is the most energy efficient GPU we've ever built. And as you will learn today, it is also the most feature packed GPU we have ever built. Ladies and gentlemen, let's start with graphics, shall we? And with that, let me introduce GeForce GTX 690. Now that is, that's the way you ought to enter a stage. That's a great entrance. What do you think about that? Well, the GeForce GTX 680, well, let's, let's dive into it. You know, some people, some people say that the GeForce GTX 690 is the most beautiful graphics card they have ever seen. Some people say that the GeForce GTX 690 is the best weapon they've ever had. I say, why bicker? We're lovers, not fighters. GTX 690 is both beautiful and the most advanced GPU technology we have ever built. Inside two Kepler GPUs, with a grand total of 3,000 CUDA cores and over six teraflops of floating point performance, connected by an SLI multi-GPU bridge so that these two GPUs can work together on a 12-layer motherboard, six-phase power supply. Now, obviously, an enormous number of transistors, and it needs really exquisite system engineering to cool it and to power it. Dual vapor chambers cool each one of the GPUs. An axial a fan that rotates softly so that this lightning card, this graphics card, is whisper quiet. Connecting all of it together is the casing. Cast, cast aluminum, magnesium alloy, connected with rigorous bolts so that there is no vibration, so that the acoustic performance, the thermal performance, the electrical performance, and ultimately your experiential performance is as wonderful as it can be. And if that's not all, a little hello world. <laughs> the engineers did a fabulous job with this design. Don't you guys think? Let's give, them, let's give the engineers a round of applause. There, there is nothing, nothing more wonderful than great craftsmanship. There is nothing more wonderful than engineers who have so much pride in their work that it has to perform wonderfully, wonderfully and look beautifully. Well, let's see what the GeForce GTX can do. First of all, you know that computer graphics is really about beautiful things, realistic things. Beauty and realism are endeavors of our computer graphics team all the time. We want crystal to look like crystal. We want hardwood floor to look like hardwood floor. And light should shine through it, reflect, refract, cast shadows in the most realistic possible way. But today, we're going to take it to a brand new level. We also know that computer graphics is about interaction with the objects in 3D. And some of the most difficult things, of course, is to shatter things. Computer graphics is created from geometry. Geometry, when shattered, creates other geometry. The other geometry needs to be lit, needs to behave physically appropriately, 
physically, realistically. The way it collides, bounces, rolls, and the way that it reflects and refracts light as it's bouncing and rolling, and the way it casts shadows on each other. All of that computation, the merging of computer graphics and the work that you know very well, physics simulation, to merge those two disciplines to create the next level of interactive graphics. With that, why don't we uh, turn it on to, we have some really cool demos. We ha you know, one of the things that I'm most proud of is the computational mathematicians we have in our company who are dedicating themselves to create some of these most amazing designs and demos. They're taking it to the next level so that we can enjoy it. And um, this is, uh, let's see, first he, uh, okay, well that's pretty cool. Now notice, when the cylinders crash, they create new geometry. And that new geometry needs to be lit and shadowed. And the reflection and refraction completely recalculated. And it's doing that completely in real time. Now, I think that that's cool. What do you guys think? Pretty amazing, huh? Well, let's, let's, see, some, uh, let's see some more stunts. OK, bullet time. That's not bad. That's kind of like Matrix. Can we see that in, in super slow-mo, please? <laughs> notice, notice what's happening here. The bullet is actually reflecting and refracting through the glass. Isn't that amazing? Completely amazing. Wow. James, that's, that's fabulous. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot of anger. That's a lot of anger. He was, he's been up all night. He's been up all night. Let's give him another round of applause, shall we? Thank you. Well, that's, some, that's something, but let's, let's kick it up a notch, as Emeril would say. So um, now that you know that, that uh, computer graphics is, is obviously beautiful, one of the one of the, the holy grails of computer graphics is to ray trace. We want to simulate light as it beams through the various environments, bouncing off the various objects, and depending on the surface material, it either reflects, refracts, absorbs, and the light bounces all over the scene. Ray tracing is incredibly hard to do. Doing ray tracing for films takes up the vast majority of their computing cycles. They call it rendering. Hours and hours and hours of computation time is necessary to render a frame. Well, here, what we're doing, of course, is we're finally able, with Kepler's GPU, do, real tra do ray tracing in real time. And so notice the ooh-ah moment. Yes. <laughs> there's one person who really appreciates ray tracing. Now, there's, there's a whole bunch of us that looks at this and go, wow, that's really hard. Look at that. And so you could see the, the, um, uh, the, the claw, our logo, of course, you could see very clearly. You could see it reflected on the cylinder, uh, not the cylinder, but the sphere. You could also see our claw reflecting off the sphere, but you could also see the sphere reflecting off the claw, off the sphere. Okay? Notice that the glass case, the glass box is um, uh, not just a piece of plastic, it's actually not just a, 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 a translucent polygon, it's actually the modeling of a piece of glass. So notice that it's reflecting. And notice the edges of, of the box is um, all ray traced. There's actually real geometry there. There's real glass. It looks like real glass. Well, that's all very cool, but let's kick it up a notch, shall we? We know that ray tracing is hard. We know that fluid simulation is incredibly hard. What if we did ray tracing and fluid simulation at the same time and ray trace the fluids. Let's go completely crazy, shall we? All right, Jim, let's see it. Whoa. The reflection and the refraction and the Fresnel effect of the water is just beautiful. You can just sit here and watch this all day. Just the stress just flows right out of my fingertips. 
This is going to be a good day. I am going to do a good job. Okay, that's fantastic. Let's give these guys a round of applause. Thank you very much. So, so as you could see, as you could see, GTC is not only about science. GTC is about stunts, science stunts, and that that would be an example of a really great one. Um, computer graphics is really at the cusp of becoming completely revolutionized again. Notice the beauty of the computer graphics that you were looking at, the realistic, the interactive, the real-time simulated effects that are only possible because of high-performance computing, only possible because we're really doing fluid simulations, only possible because we're, we're really doing light simulations. Simulating and computer graphics are merging in a way that we have never seen before, and Kepler is just the beginning of it. You can see that in several years, computer graphics will look nothing like the chalk, chalky, computer-shaded, easy, easily shaded looks that we see in game console and video games today. This is the way that next generation computer graphics will look. Computer graphics, the first element of Kepler's influence. Now, of course, we understand that computer graphics is vital to the work that we do together here. It's vital even to GPU computing. And the reason for that is because the computer graphics industry is so large. The video game industry is so large. There are hundreds of millions of gamers around the world. The video game industry is tens of billions of dollars large. As a result, is able to fund enormous advancements. If we can harness that basic architecture and leverage it for general purpose computing, it is unbelievable how much R&D we can bring to bear. We can also, of course, make this technology highly pervasive so that everyone here in the audience, any of the scientists around the world, can easily reach out and grab a supercomputer in their hands. Kepler is a big deal for computer graphics, but Kepler is a bigger deal for high-performance computing. Today, I'd like to announce the other persona of Kepler. Kepler is going to be the most energy efficient and the highest performance HPC accelerator in the world. 